Tomorrow afternoon, ESPN delivers the 94th annual Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. Can Joey <laughs> Chestnut defend his title and earn the coveted mustard yellow belt, or will six-time champion Kobayashi regain the title? It's the 2009 Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. ESPN tomorrow at noon. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Go ahead. I know you're waiting. <laughs> Joey Chestnut. Uh, we need to get you in that contest. <laughs> And uh, a look at uh, the 0-1 car. Danny O'Quinn, the Aaron's Lucky Dog free pass uh, guy, so he gets back on, he gets a lap back on this caution. And Brad, we're set for the finish now, fuel-wise, yeah. with a little strategy session. Yeah, absolutely. Those guys got the fuel. David Reagan's, uh, you heard him, his crew chief talking about taking it easy on fuel. He stayed up front. He, Matt Kenseth, as well as Kyle Busch and Boyer, they're all going to be good to go. We're going to see some solid racing. Hopefully, we don't get another caution and they can shoot it out for the next 38 laps. Kenseth and Reagan, fuel only. McDowell and all Geyer, third and fourth, right sides only, everybody else four. We're coming to the restart dock with Kenseth choosing the inside. Double foul restart, and this is a spotter's nightmare. Let's listen in as we come down to the green flag and listen to the spotters with full throttle. And they're going to add a lap here, put the lights back on to get everybody lined up. Now it'll be one to go. And let's check into the garage where Jamie is caught up with Dale Earnhardt Jr. And he's out of the car now. So, Junior, what happened? I don't really know. We was uh, sitting there trying to save the right front. Everybody been blistering tires on that last run, and I was going to try to sit, sit, sit back here and save my tires and then cut up through them with, you know, before we had to make the last stop. And uh, we'd lost all that track position, so trying to race up in there and run right behind people just burned the right front off again. So I was trying to keep air on the uh, front of my car, and some guys got together. It's real, real tight off the two. Guys are pushing up into each other, and... Uh, Somebody had to check up and, and uh, cause a crash, but it was bound to happen. I mean, everybody's cars are driving about the same. Um, looks like uh, Kyle's car's handling really good, sticking to the track really good. And uh, we need to uh, do a little more homework, get a little, little more downforce in the, into our car so we can handle that good uh, when the tires get worn. This place is wore out and slick. We ain't been running on it all weekend. Ain't no rubber downs. So uh, we, we had fun. I was having fun in the Fast and All Chevrolet. It was good. He's used a, the word fun quite a bit, Doc, and he'll be back in the car in Atlanta. He will be, and that'll be his last race of 2009 in the Nationwide Series. There are 35 cars in the lead lap, and Michael Waltrip is the last car in the lead lap. His damaged Toyota has been on and off pit road again, trying to get some of that sheet metal peeled away to the right side and uh, get some help there with the cosmetics. And how much will that impact the car aerodynamically? Well, it's going to make a difference. It's, uh, it's caved in a lot on that right side. The lucky thing for him is it didn't hit the wheel. And, uh, and really cause more damage. And the front of the fender's fine. I mean, he can still, if he gets in the draft, be fairly competitive. All right, let's try this again. A couple of rounds. Fenway, Fenway teammates up front. Uh, Kenseth on the inside, Reagan on the high side. Double file restart shootout style. And we told you these kind of restarts keep the spotters very busy. So let's listen in as we go full throttle. You ready? Coming to the green. Be here. Right, you're ready here now. Get you a good start. That is real telemetry speed you are seeing there, folks, on that full throttle. Chuck, you think that's a lot of chatter on that radio, but those spotters are going to earn their nickels now with his double file restarts. I've been up there spotting for a restricted plate race, and it's very, very difficult. I didn't like it at all. And you can hear all that chatter out there, even outside your headset. By the way, Patrick Shelter checked out and released at the care center. He is okay. How about Michael McDowell there in third position in the 47 car? We told you he's racing for a future. They don't get something done here in this race and get sponsors. He will not be in Chicago next weekend. Dave. 
And he, guys, he has had such a good race car tonight on two different occasions. He has made no changes or asked for no changes on that race car. Gene Need, the crew chief, who you see right there, has been overseeing things. He just hopes there'll be someone that'll go with his driver at the end of this race. Yeah, he's going to have to be extremely patient right now. He sees a couple guys going by on the high side, but he's in a really good spot with Kyle Busch behind him. He's our biggest mover. He's gained 36 spots since the start of the race. He was the highest finishing rookie here in February, finished in 14th the first time he ran the nationwide car here. And now a little bump drafting, a little pop from behind on Matt Kenseth. You have to be careful right there. He's losing, uh, losing a little bit of grip. Got him up in the middle. You see how many spots that this team's gained on pit road. He's losing some down the front straightaway, but he's gained quite a few spots. 17 on pit road. Now he is wedged in the middle as Carl Edwards will go underneath him and take the bottom line away. You know, uh, Matt Kenseth did not take tires that last time. I don't think that's going to work out too good as they go if they run a lot of laps here. But it's working pretty good so far, Mike. Yeah, I think if you would ask Eddie Pardue, the crew chief for the 16 car, he might have done something different on that last stop as we watch now the battle for the lead. Cliff Boyer to the outside, David Reagan down low. They're door to door as they head down the straightaway into the corner. There comes Kenseth, though, back into the picture. Their question was, they had a lot of debate over the radio as they came down pit road, whether to take four tires, two tires. They even debated taking just left sides. Instead, they kind of ran out of time at the decision moment, and they went with fuel only. As Kenseth rolled away, he said, we're going to be sitting ducks. And as you can see him fading back, he appears to be prophetic. His car is not handling the way he wants it to. And he feels like the left side tires will not go the distance, guys. Right now, Mike, he is going backwards as they go by him on both sides, caught in the middle and without any drafting help. Yeah, that was exactly what I was afraid of when he took it. Andy and I, neither one agreed with that uh, scenario there of, of not putting any tires on this car. And it's just hard to hold it down, especially as you get other cars around you. And their car's been loose most of the night anyway. Likewise, just like Kenseth did a moment ago, the 47 of McDowell in the middle. And uh, a lot of times these veterans are going to high and, and low side and not want to help a rookie, although he's got a rookie, Justin Allgaier, on his inside. And McDowell's still losing spots. Oh, they're getting together just, yeah. man, almost. Oh, be careful, get tight in there. Still three wide. No help. There was three rookies uh, all together right there. Scott Legacy on the outside. You see all those yellow bumpers right there in that group. Michael Annette in the 15, the 47. That yellow stripe means it's a rookie driver. Back up front, Boyer trying to hold off Vickers. How about Jason Leffer coming up on the outside now? He's showing up to the party. Yeah, he's uh, been very patient tonight, and he started back a little further than what he's accustomed to here, but uh, he has a string of uh, 11 straight top 10 finishes, and I think he's just now going to assert uh, how strong his car really is. Another guy I think might be doing that will be Kevin Harvick in the 33. He's got a strong car. Uh, he's been fairly patient this, this whole race, and we haven't seen a lot of him, but I think he might show up here when it's time to start paying off. Remember, Vickers and Leffler are Braun racing teammates in the 32 and 38. It is a Chevy up front, a Ford second, and then they are side by side there on back. Back with more with the Subway Jalapeno 250 in a moment. <laughs> 